Love really makes the world go round. But let's be honest here, it's pretty hard to love everything and anything. Or, you know, just anyone around us in general. While I believe we should always make an effort to keep peace and harmony wherever we go, where nature has shown us that even animals have a hard time getting along. At least, sometimes. Most of the time. Okay, all of the time. Either way, today I'll be presenting to you 10 animals that hate each other. Whether it's competition for food, territory, or just being annoying for the sake of it, these animals don't seem to get along and today we're gonna understand why. Check out these 10 pairs of animals and don't miss the one pair I place at the top. You wouldn't actually expect them to be bitter rivals, but eh, weirder things have happened. With all that said and done, let's begin, shall we? Number 10. Birds and Cats In this video, I'll be giving a lot of advice for those who love animals and want to keep them at home. You'll find this useful because sometimes animals don't get along and it's important for us to consider that before we bring them into our homes. While one should be concerned if they bring a dog in with a cat, or vice versa, you actually should be more concerned if you bring a bird in with a cat. Sometimes we can get lucky and love both and keep both in our homes, and well, they get along for the most part. But otherwise, the cat might try to eat the bird. One thing about cats is that they do like to hunt. They don't see any difference between wild animals and pets. For them, if there's an animal they can prey on, they will just go for it. And that's why these two are enemies and cats are very likely to eat any small birds you have. And maybe even a big bird if they're brave enough. Although, those big birds are far more intimidating and there's a larger amount of rivalry there. The cats might still try to mess with them regardless of their big size, but the birds are probably going to respond with their beaks and talons. It's best to keep these two apart from each other. But if you insist on having both, just make sure you keep an eye on them. Number 9. Large and Small Birds You know that saying, birds of a feather flock together? That saying is inspired by the universal truth that birds of the same species do indeed get along. In fact, if you decide to have small birds of different species at your home, you can probably still house them in the same space without many problems. But let's say you decide to add some big birds to the group. Then you're going to have some major issues. Because you see, big birds and small birds do not get along. The small ones can easily get stressed and triggered by the presence of larger birds near them, even when the big bird seems peaceful. Again, seems peaceful. This can cause stress that causes the small birds to fight and even feather picking, which is a form of self-mutilation. And just like cats, small birds are also likely to get hurt by the big bird's huge beak if there ever is a conflict. So be nice to the birds and let them live surrounded by other birds of their same size. Number 8. Rabbits and guinea pigs. So sometimes you might think that animals are supposed to get along just because they are similar to each other, or that they're both herbivores, or that they're both friggin' adorable. Well, here's an example that proves that theory to be very wrong. Some people think it's a good idea to have rabbits and guinea pigs living together. You know, just because they're both small, harmless mammals that you can keep as pets. And again, they're cute. But the truth is, you gotta choose one or the other. I wouldn't recommend having both in the same living space. The interactions between these two can be quite chaotic. From dietary needs to communication, these two differ from each other in significant ways. Rabbits can easily kick the guinea pigs, sometimes by accidents and sometimes on purpose, and sometimes the rabbits might try to mate with the guinea pigs. While that sort of mental image is actually quite disturbing, the reason this is bad is because it might hurt the guinea pigs' backs. In general, rabbits are bullies to guinea pigs, which is a sentence I never thought I'd ever have to read. Either way, if this isn't enough to convince you, let me point out that rabbits are carriers of a bacteria that can cause respiratory diseases in guinea pigs. So if you do love animals, don't let these two live together. It just doesn't seem like it'll work. Number 7. Ferrets and Smaller Animals Do you remember that kid at your school who was always aggressive when it came to playing games? There is usually at least one kid who doesn't know how to measure their boundaries and ends up hurting others in the process. And a lot of times, they don't even mean to harm. They just don't know how to draw the line. Well, that's what happens to ferrets. Ferrets are playful animals by nature. They enjoy playing with other creatures and will not say no to a chance to have some fun. However, this behavior might be annoying to small animals because usually the ferret's way of playing ends up hurting them. While ferrets can easily play with other ferrets or creatures of the same size as them, the smaller animals such as canaries and hamsters can easily get harmed once the ferret starts using them as toys. I mean, if that wasn't enough, ferrets are also known to have some pretty big jealousy issues. They'll likely harm another animal that gets more attention than them. 
So don't let the cuteness fool you. Ferrets are loving creatures, but they can easily be the most hated companion if you surround them with the wrong crowd of animals. Number 6. Hedgehogs and Foxes While Sonic the Hedgehog and his friend Tails suggest a possible friendship between a hedgehog and a fox, and a universe where a hedgehog is bigger than a fox, this companionship is far from true in real life. Hedgehogs actually want to stay away from foxes as these animals are their natural predators. But I should also point out that foxes are quite lazy when it comes to hunting for their prey. In fact, since foxes usually live so close to urban areas, they can find lots of trash to feed themselves. So hedgehogs are not really their first choice. A fox will likely have its tummy full by the time it comes face to face with a hedgehog, and usually foxes will attack hedgehogs that don't have much time left. That's a relief for hedgehogs, but it definitely doesn't mean that it makes them ideal friends for foxes. So it's better if these two keep their distance. Number 5. Fire-bellied toads and fire-bellied newts. Next on our list we have the fire-bellied toad and the fire-bellied newt. While both animals are amphibians and both have a fire belly, these two need more than those common features to be able to live together. Otherwise, they might trigger a literal toxic relationship. If you love to keep amphibians at home, you might be tempted to house them together since they both have pretty much the same needs. But that might be the most dangerous thing you can do. Let's start by saying the fact that fire-bellied toads have a huge appetite. Once they're hungry, they will aggressively hunt for whatever possible meal is in front of them, and fire-bellied newts won't be the exception. The toads can easily injure or even kill the newts. There have even been cases where these interactions ended up in newts losing some of their limbs. But even if the toads were not to attack their fellow amphibians, the newts are still likely to get stressed just by knowing there's a predator within their same living space. Also, both amphibians release toxins from their skin, and experts believe that such toxins have the potential to harm one another. Number 4. Elephants and Rhinos Did you ever think herbivores are not aggressive? I mean, what can put two herbivore animals against one another? A piece of grass? Well, things are a bit different when we bring two of the strongest herbivores into the conversation, the elephant and the rhinoceros. These two don't phase each other often, but when they do, hoo hoo, things get a bit ugly. There's an interesting case in South Africa in which a group of orphan elephants provoked confrontations with a rare group of black rhinos, which led to the death of 36 of this already endangered species. Could it be that the elephants were resenting the loss of their parents? It is said that they became orphans after their parents were culled due to the overpopulation of their species. So the elephants became more aggressive as the time passed, and ultimately led them to the attacks that ended with the lives of those poor rhinos. But this isn't an isolated case. It has been noted that there's always some sort of chaos every time we see these two come into contact. So don't underestimate the herbivores. They can be quite aggressive, even if there's no evident reason for a conflict. Number 3. Polar Bears and Walruses Now, before we get to the top of our list, let's check out one of the coldest parts of the world, the Arctic. This is where our next pair of animals live. I'm talking about the polar bear and the walrus, two of the most powerful animals out there. So it comes as no surprise that conflict might arise any time between the two of these when they find themselves in front of each other. Polar bears are in fact considered the kings and queens of the Arctic, but walruses are three times larger than them. And still, polar bears attack them. That's actually just insane because we've seen stuff like packs of lions and other predators kill victims that are larger than them in the African savanna. But the big difference there is that they do the hunting in groups, while polar bears hunt alone. They must be very brave to come after an animal that's so big. The walrus's natural instinct is to flee. But if a predator is messing with one of their little ones or if they get cornered, their instincts will make them fight and inflict damage on the threatening animal chasing after them. For that very obvious reason, polar bears and walruses cannot be friends. Sorry, everybody. Now it's time for the day's best pick. The picture I have for you today is of a mongoose and a cobra. Are they someone's pet or are they in the wild? I mean, where on earth could you find these two animals in the same spot? Well, let's have a look. Number two, mongoose and cobra. It takes a very smart, agile, and brave animal to face a poisonous creature like the cobra. And that's why the Indian gray mongoose and the cobra don't get along, because this kind of mongoose has the perfect skills to face such a threatening animal. Best of all, this mongoose is immune to the cobra's venom. The snake can hiss for as long as it wants, but that will not make the mongoose step away. While they're both fit for a fight, the chances of them messing with each other are actually quite low. However, none of them will have a problem fighting each other for food if both of them set their eyes on the same meal. 
The mongoose is stronger and agile, but a bite of the cobra can slow the competitor down, even if the venom doesn't have any effect on them. So who would win in a fight between these two? That's a little hard to determine, and it really depends on how each animal uses its skill. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only 5 seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next 5 seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just try it, it really works. Now for number 1. Cheetahs and Baboons Who in their right mind would mess with a cheetah, the fastest animal in the world? Well, to answer that, that would be the baboon. There's even evidence of one of these brave primates coming to the rescue of a gazelle that was being attacked by a cheetah. And there's also another case in which a group of baboons chased a group of cheetahs that were drinking from a water hole that had already been claimed by these aggressive primates. I'm gonna take a guess here and say that the baboons don't like the cheetahs at all, and I would also say that the feeling is mutual. I wouldn't like to be the fastest predator out there and still have to run for my life because of some baboons. And that's all for today, everybody. What did you think of the animals presented? Was there any interaction that surprised you? Did any of this info help you make choices regarding the way you pair up your pets? Let us know in the comments section below. And with all that said and done, I will see you all next time. Later, everybody.